Hello everyone and welcome to another iClone 7 Academy tutorial. Today's topic will be GI Voxels. So what are GI Voxels? Well, think of them as a cubicle world, kind of like Minecraft, but instead of you building a scene out of cubes, iClone will do that for you. It will create the cubes from the shapes you have in the scene and conform to them. And the more, the smaller the cubes are, the more accurate that GI solution will be. The thing is that you don't have an infinite number of voxels for your scene. It's already a preset amount. Now, this preset amount is based on what is called a GI range, as you can see here. So, the amount of voxels is always going to be the same. Now, the uh, voxel GI range has what is called an anchor, and this anchor is the center of that GI range. The cool thing is that you can control the voxel size by scaling your GI range without losing any voxels. So that means your voxels will become smaller. So why would you want to do this? Well, let's take a look at this. If we have a range that is very big, that means the voxels are going to be very big as well. And one voxel could turn out that is covering one quarter of an entire sphere and not only what's going to happen is it's going to have to average all those pixels on the surface of that quarter of the sphere and turn it into a single value before it spits it out as bounce light so the smaller the voxel the less pixels it needs to average which means the more accurate your gi, GI solution is going to be Another thing that iClone is doing to optimize this is using that anchor and anything around the anchor will have the highest resolution of voxels and as it goes further away from it, it will have less accurate uh, solution to it. And this is the way uh, iClone is able to keep up uh, with a GI in real time or global illumination in real time. Now, let's take a look at the scene and what I mean by this. All right. So, as I mentioned before, you can scale the volume or GI range. However, the more you scale it, notice how the voxels turn out bigger and bigger. And the bigger they are, as I mentioned before, the less accurate that GI solution is going to be. Notice the dark areas here. As we make it bigger, which means as we make it small, smaller, this uh, GI volume or range, notice that our solution starts to become more accurate the shadow air the shadowing area starts to get much darker in there because it's actually calculating the occlusion much better instead of having to use those big voxels to average those surfaces it's using much smaller voxels that means that that occlusion that's happening as as the surface comes closer to another surface is actually being calculated a lot better now, let's take a look at here at um, two different images, both with high resolution and high and low resolution. Let's take a look at this one first, and then we'll look at the other one. This one, notice that at low resolution, there's very little contrast going on here. As we increase the voxel resolution from low to high, and I will show you how to do that, uh, you can get a lot more contrast into, into your scene giving you a more accurate GI solution. Again, this is because the voxels are much smaller. And the same thing happens when you're dealing with specular bounds. Notice here, with low resolution, look how blurry he is in the reflection, and high resolution, much better. Obviously, you're not going to get a mirror perfect reflection here, simply because the, the models are being voxelized, so these are going to be tiny cubes that are being reflected. However, from far away, this will give you a pretty good uh, uh, simulation of a, a mirror-like sphere. So that's something to consider. Now, let's, let's take a look at where we can change the resolution. It's inside Project Settings, Visual Settings, and here, Voxel Mode, you have Low Resolution and High Resolution. 
here you get eight times the amount of uh, voxels than low resolution does. And you should only turn this on when you're ready to do a final render and you do your final lighting. Otherwise, do not turn this on because you, you will suffer a pretty high performance hit. Another thing to watch out for is how much memory you're consuming when you're using GI. I'm going to press Ctrl F to bring up the information panel to show you what I mean. Right now, with for this very simple scene, we're using 1.4 gigabytes of memory. And this is because we are using a high resolution voxels. Now, if we turn down to low resolution, notice we go to a little bit less than half of what we had before. And if we turn it off completely, then we go down to, that's 200 megabytes less of memory that you're using. So always keep track of how much memory you're using when you're using GI. This is because once you start going and start using your system memory instead of your video memory from the video card, your performance is going to slow down very, very drastically. So uh, always watch out for that and uh, keep that in mind, okay? And as I showed you before, it is very important that you actually do the lighting with a proper resolution. Notice that how much the, uh, uh, the lighting changes when you go from one voxel resolution to another. So that's also something you want to keep in mind. Also, if you're doing animation, you do not require to have high resolution uh, voxels when you're just testing out for animation. As a matter of fact, if you're doing animation, I would totally completely turn off the GI when you're doing the playback. So you get a much faster frame rate. You turn only this on when it's necessary and only when you're doing your final render image, then you can go into a higher setting for resolution, voxel resolution. That's something you definitely want to keep in mind. Now, let's talk a little bit more about GI range. Now, let's take a look at this. It's very important because it could happen to you. I'm going to go ahead and select all the models in here. And I'm going to do uh, a W. And I'm going to press the control so I can duplicate all those models selected. And now, I'm going to go ahead and go back to my... Uh, GI range settings here on that global settings for global illumination and I'm going to take that GI range and scale it down so it's just in the field of view of the camera like so so we are covering uh, the entire range with uh, uh, the field of view of the camera notice there that it's getting too small so let's make it bigger 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 until it covers the entire scene there that's pretty good right there However, notice that as, as soon as I start panning the camera to the side, all of a sudden my GI is going to stop right there where the edge of that GI range goes. So it's important that if you have if you're going to have a large camera pan or large or big move on your camera that you are covering the entire range of that of of that geometry that you're working with. That way, when you move around, you'll have GI all throughout that scene or that camera move. Another thing that you can do also is you could, if you have to, you could animate. You can animate the anchor point. Now, I wouldn't recommend doing this unless you really, really have to, because this could cause some some light flickering. This is because as you move the anchor it is reconstructing the voxels and this will change the lighting um, on a frame by frame basis because of that reconstruction so there is something that you can use to minimize this flickering which is this uh, suppress light flicker and this will aver do a lot an average on a frame by frame basis, so you get a lot less flickering if you do run into this kind of situation. So again, that's something to consider. Another thing that you can do is if you must have GI uh, accurate throughout and always in the center of your camera, one thing that you can do is actually link your anchor to whatever camera you have. That means that once you start moving the camera, 
the anchor will always be in the center of that scene. And as you can see here, everything will be nice and accurate as far as GI in the center of that world, of that image. However, there's always the risk of the popping or the flickering. So you need to weigh out what's more important, a GI, an accurate GI solution or less flickering. So uh, that's something definitely to keep in mind. And um, I believe this just about covers all the features for global illumination and GI and voxels. And uh, if you haven't seen uh, Basics GI Part 1 and 2, I definitely suggest you look at that because I show you how to further refine whatever voxels you got into a much nicer image by controlling these parameters over here. And uh, that will about just about conclude this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask me in the forum. And uh, have a good night. I hope you enjoyed this. Take care.